goals, that's very important. And if it falls below, either you must bring down your goals to a lower level, if you can't achieve a higher level. Number two is, we must build the competence into your people to see that the performance should be at the level which is acceptable to the organization, to every individual working for the company. Now, what we say is, best managerial practices starts from effective planning and it ends with valuation of performance and control and controlling is nothing but a measuring and monitoring technique which says that this is what we wanted to do, this is what we have done. And if they both match, it is excellent. But if there is a shortfall, we can always take to action. Now friends, this is the topic which I am doing today. And uh, more or less with this we may be able to complete module 1, last class and this class. And the next class we will go on to a different module. But it is very important. If you say that I have completed an activity PGTM program, and if you say that you have done something about operations management, what is an operation strategy? We must be fully aware of. Operation strategy is nothing but it starts from the corporate mission. What I told you. Last time I explained, you know, vision, mission, objectives, all that. We start with the corporate mission. That is what the company really intends to do. What is its purpose of existence? What are its plans? That is known as the mission. From the corporate mission, we evolve business strategies. Just now I explained to you is new level strategies. From the business strategy, we evolve product or service plans. These, is, these are the products to be done. These are the services to be offered, etc. etc. Then we must fix up what are the competitive priorities for a company. Maybe it has to complete one order first from customer A. Then it has to go to customer B, customer C, etc. Then I talk to you for nearly a half an hour on these things. The importance of cost, importance of quality, adoptability and flexibility and time management. These are most basic things for every manager. We must try to build the competitive priorities in terms of cost reduction, time management, practices to bring about best quality products. And if one product loses the demand, the company should be capable of adopting itself, be flexible to change over to different products. Maybe it is either closely related or maybe it is slightly out of faith, but we must make sure that we must have the flexibility. So these are the basic requirements. Now I told you, no, external environment, this is what it means. Business organizations heavily depend upon external environment. This is opportunities and threats, internal environment, strengths and weaknesses. You start this particular flow diagram starts with assessment means an evaluation to know what is the extent of business opportunity that exists both in the national markets and also in the global markets. Now assessment of the global business conditions talks about the marketing opportunity that are available world over because today most of the Indian companies like any company like uh, Bajaj or uh, Maruti or any of the company wants to export their products to different parts of the world and get the international marketing title. So we need to assess the global conditions. conditions and then what are our competencies? We must improve on those competencies. If we have weaknesses, we have to overcome the weaknesses. Weaknesses cannot be allowed to continue as weaknesses, but we must be able to overcome the weaknesses. Now most important, how do companies evolve their operation strategy? That's the question which normally is asked in the examination. First one I just want to explain to you in the flow diagram what is the conversion system. I told you about what is transformation system. That is the same as a production system. A production system is an integration of inputs, processes and outputs. And when you position it, position it means bringing the right inputs, using the best methods and practices to convert the inputs to meaningful outputs and making sure that the outputs are the one which the customers really want and they are happy and they are satisfied when you offer them. That is known as positioning the, position, positioning the production system. Positioning is nothing but making a customer know about the product, he must be able to hear about the product, buy the product, 
use the product. That is how you are able to position it. That is what is known as physical positioning. That is also what is known as psychological positioning. We have to do both. Now, we have to be very specific. A company may have 50 products or it may have 20 products plus 10 services. How much you need to produce in each one of these? So that is what is known as product and service plans. How many variants have to be planned in each product? The Maruti, for example, have a range of uh, 10 different models of cars and in each model there are variants. Auto LXI, Auto VXI, Auto VDI, that's called the variants. So if you have to plan for that. Product plans, service plans and then in the last class I explained to you as part of operations management a decision in terms of whether we do in-house manufacturing or outsourcing is more important. So this is what is known as make decision or buy decision. Make or buy. Make means make it in-house. Buy means subcontract it or purchase it from outside. Now outsourcing plans today have been widely used in many many companies because if you do it in-house the cost goes up, it takes more time and today most of the companies are paying, paying heavy salaries the cost of manufacture itself will be more so most of the companies even IBM, Dell, all these big big companies have started outsourcing but what technique they are using is they are outsourcing to such companies who are rated as qualified vendors all cannot be part of the outsourcing plan only those companies which have the required <coughs> capability to produce the right product they become the outsourced companies and uh, technology management is part of operations management. If there is a new way of doing it, if there is a new process that can be followed in the existing process with some improvement, I think we have to bring about it. So organizations as part of their operation strategy should talk about process and technology plans and then I mentioned to you resources have become very scarce. You are not able to get the funds to the extent to which what you want. So there is a scarcity of resources. Managers should use their discretion the way how resources have to be allocated. So I will tell you when I come to that chapter. And last one is, we are going to study a separate chapter on next Saturday, which is known as facility planning. Facility refers to a place or an institution which facilitates this conversion process where I am doing some problems on location, layout, line balancing and all that. So facility plans, we have to install the correct capacities, locate the companies in the right places, make proper layout and make sure that the flow of materials and other things should be minimum.